Hi, welcome to Rose Opal Knits, our crafty podcast. This is episode 52, and I'm Daphne. And I'm Erica, and we are a mother-in-law, daughter-in-law duo from Delaware, and I'm a wife and homeschooling mom. I have four children. I'm married to their oldest, and we have three little kids, so I just stay home with them, mm. but we don't do school yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and to just say, you know, throw it out there, we are a multi-generational house. Um, my oldest and Daphne and their kids um, have rooms in our basement, but of course they have access to the whole house <laughs> too. <laughs> so, um, but all right. First, I think we should probably mention our year-long make-along. We have a year-long make-along in our Facebook group, Rose Opal Knits on Facebook. And if you purchase the Rose Opal set or any of the individual skeins um, and knit or crochet something out of the yarn I guess you could probably weave it too I mean you know <laughs> if you use the yarn it counts yeah just post it <laughs> yeah so this is the uh, rose opal colorway and then the yellow is Daphne and the orange is Erica so and this yarn is hand dyed by Sweet Mountain Crafts. And um, this is a cowl I finished out of it recently. And Daphne knit socks yeah. out of hers. I finished those a couple episodes ago though. Yeah. I don't know which episode though. Mm -hmm. So like I said, that's a year long mail. We will be pulling prizes from the finished object thread that's in our Facebook group. Um, Every couple of months we'll pull pattern prizes and then there might be some bigger prizes here and there. But, um, and you know, probably like one, like big one at the end of the year. Probably. Yeah. So, all right. Um, if you want more details about that Mal, they'll be in the description box below along with all the show notes. And yes, they are there. <laughs> all right. So we're going to go right in to um, the, what I call the crafty goodness with finished objects. I just know what we're wearing. Oh, yeah. I always forget what we're wearing. I had, I was wearing something in our... Well, they're um, both also finished objects, so it counts as both. Yeah. So, do you want to go first or do you want me to? Oh, you can go first, because I just did a bunch of talking. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm wearing my Bean and Olive by Andre Mowry, and I did modify it. I think I knit the fourth size, I'm pretty sure, but it's kind of big, so I could have done the size smaller, but it's fine. I'm not going to stand up because I'm just wearing leggings too. <laughs> but anyways, so I stopped increasing short, like less than you had to for the you yoke. The, yeah, you cut the yoke. Because mm -hmm. it was getting too deep for me. And then I took out the color work right here and I didn't do decreases. I just did knit straight, rapid decrease cuff basically for the sleeves. And then it's actually cropped too, so... It's not super cropped. It's more cropped than the pattern, though. Because mm -hmm. it is slightly cropped in the pattern, but it's more cropped than that. But not by much. I think, like, two inches max. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. So, that's what I'm wearing. And okay. it is also part of my Make 9, so it's the first thing off of it. All right. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. And I am wearing my Erica scarf. Yay! It's finally finished. So this project has been on the needles, I think, since 2000 and I should have looked. Um, that's the back side. Since 2018. I thought it was like 2016 or 17, but it was 2018, I'm pretty sure. 2019? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so it's my fourth one. And... I used, it was held in this project bag by Molly Klein Design, and I used Plymouth Alpaca. There's my needle. I knit it on Chowgu needles. And the yarn is Plymouth Yarns Alpaca Prima. And there wasn't a color name, it's just a color number. And I had two balls of it. And I have a little teeny tiny bit left. 
I think it was three grams. I probably could have got like two more rows out of it, but a couple more. But since it has a garter border at the bottom, I didn't want to keep going too long and then not have enough for that garter border. But like I said, this is the fourth one that I have knitted through the years. And just real quick, I'm going to show you other ones that I knit. So here's one. It's skinnier. And this is knit out of willow tree yarn. And um, I believe this was my first skein of independently dyed yarn. I think I purchased it right before I went to the hospital to have Mary Rose <laughs> five years, five and a half years ago. And um, when I came home from the hospital, it, it was waiting for me there. <laughs> and um, I also knit, knitted two, feel that. Ooh, it's a very wooly wool. I found it from a seller on Etsy and you see how it pulled in like a zigzag? It's kind of neat. I know some people would hate it, but um, I didn't mind it. So both of these, and here's another one. This one didn't do the zigzag because I made it a bit wider. But um, They don't feel the same though. Well, they might have been from different sheep. So this little shop on Etsy no longer is on Etsy anymore. But um, she was a, I want to say she was a young, like an older teenager or a young woman. And she convinced her parents to let her get some sheep. I think she had three or four. And so this was yarn from her sheep that she dyed. And um, I found her because I think I was looking for... Pro, not Jane Austen character names yarn and one of these is Mr. Knightley and the other one I don't remember what the name is but I have project pages on Ravelry for all four of these because I used to be very good at keeping project pages on Ravelry and um, I will link them in the show notes below if you're interested in looking at that information. And I'm gonna, this one has a project page. I need to update it and say it's finished. <laughs> but all right, I'm gonna leave it on because I'm not over warm. You wanna go next or? Well, no, you go. Yeah, you yeah. go. <laughs> okay, anyway, so let's just talk about my failed yarn chicken again. Okay, <laughs> ready? <laughs> It sucks again, but, so, look, you can't even see it. That's where I was, and these are finished, so I do have two, but I messed up. You didn't and mess I have, up. I messed up. <laughs> That's how much I have. Just right there. So, this is a DK weight sock. It's a one-by-one one rib with a heel flap and gusset and a wedge toe, and the main color is one of our yarns that we dyed. Mm -hmm. And then this one is actually Sweet Mountain Crafts Grandma's Teacup. So you had to another pair of DK weight socks out of those yeah. recently. That I had already knit those ones. I don't think it looks bad at all. No, it looks and you fine. know what? You can like decide which foot this one feels best on, and then make it that that foot sock, like a left foot <laughs> sock or a right. Oh, we did. Did we say that Theo was in the room? Theo's behind us. us. Yeah, I don't know. You you can't see him. He's back there. Yes, there he is. <laughs> He's not a happy guy today. But anyway, so these are my socks. They're done on a US three, so they're done. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we have the ro our rose opal knit DK weight sock recipe um, on our website. All right, sorry about that interruption. Um, he needed a person. Yeah, he needed a person. And um, so I was saying that our rose opal knits DK weight sock recipe. Um, and three different DK weight toe options are on our website in the blog portion. So, but, all right, <laughs> we're still working on finished objects. <laughs> he so. gets very excited and just like to jump. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a finished object that is not, no longer here, but I will pop a picture in the screen, um, right now while I'm talking about it. And I actually didn't bring the yarn leftovers with me. But, so I've been working on these socks for a very long time. They were shorty socks for my father, and I knit them two at a time with Regia, Regia yarn, however you say it. And um, on don't US, don't US one and a half needles, Chalgo needles, and I 
cast on 64 stitches for him and I knit I think I knitted 18 rounds of 2 by 2 ribbing four rounds before I went into a slip stitch heel and then um, knit down the foot and I did a barn toe for his sock. So hopefully you've been looking at a picture <laughs> here on the screen and um, that's all about those. All right, you have a finished object? I do. He's super cute. Oh, Ready? Yeah, you got him. Okay. It's a gnome. It is the, mm, I forget what it's called. Never Not Know Me Gnome by, I knew it. I forgot it. <laughs> by Rillian Knits, maybe? Something like that. It'll be on the screen and in yeah. the description box below. But anyway, so he is knit with the rose opal set. And then, so the yellow is the Daphne color. And then the beard is, the beard is the rose opal. And then the brown for his body is actually Noble Character Crafts Wilderness that I bought in 2020. Like early 2020, I think. Yeah. yeah. But that's him. He's very cute. He is cute. I do plan on knitting another one with an orange hat for her. <laughs> so they can be friends. Uh huh. And then if I have we enough yarn, stick them back there on the, <laughs> and then the if table. I have enough yarn to knit one with just the rose opal set, so. Yeah. But those are my guys. Mm -hmm. He's gonna hang out over here. <laughs> he looks cute there. Yeah, yeah. I like he'll, him. He'll have friends eventually. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's my gnome. <laughs> All right, and I have one more finished object. It is cross stitch embroidery, um, not knitting. Oh look, that's where I was. Oh, I didn't even say where I was. In I was up here in the hearts. Well, so, yeah. Uh -huh. I just finished the hearts. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> hold on one second, please. Okay. So my last finished object is a cross stitch embroidery uh, project that I worked on. I worked on the last two weeks. Um, so let me show this up close. These are progress keepers that I made. Um, or they could just be like. <laughs> Our shirt's colorful. He wants to eat it. <laughs> um, and most of the stitches are tent stitches or back stitches. Um, but there are um, a few cross stitches in there. But I used a 28 count even weave and sulky threads one strand and I did one strand over one so that's how, why the stitches are so small and I used two different patterns um, for the no th three hmm. um, yeah three different patterns for the this project and I will show you those now let me put this down <laughs> I was like, where's my bag? Okay, so this is what I have left of the even weave. It's just a 28 count even weave from Hobby Lobby, white. And like I said, I used sulky threads. And if you're not familiar with sulky, this is what it's like. It comes on a spool. And a lot of people will say that it's equivalent to using two strands of DMC. I don't think it's quite that thick. I think it's more like one one and a half strand thickness of DMC. Um, and all the um, all the patterns I used for this project were from October House. And this is the October House Knit Every Day pattern. This is a paid for yeah. pattern, obviously. And then I also used this pattern, this, I have this as a digital copy, this is a paid for pattern as well, called a Knitter's Sampler. And I just pulled motifs from it as I did the other one. And then there is one more October House pattern that is called Wool Socks. 
you can find this on their website. It's free. And I also used that one. So I, okay. Before I say that, let me show you what else I used for finishing. That's just in these bags that you can find on Amazon. I like those bags for my cross stitch. And in this bag, I have a bunch of finishing items. So I used different items that I had left over from when I made jewelry. I used to make jewelry like these earrings I made these years, years ago. Um, so I have all the supplies left over. But I thought I had, I do, I know it's in here, I'll put it in here, here it is. So from Amazon, I ordered a multi-pack of these little wooden hoops and it comes with a wooden back and then a wooden interior piece that you put the embroidery on and it comes with a screw and then like the, um, the nut, I guess, <laughs> that holds the screw on. The, these were very, dirty like not dirty dirty but I imagine it was left over from when the wood was soldered or cut or whatever I had to wash them and dry them let them dry out and then wipe them down again before I could put the um, piece that I stitched in it or it would leave black marks on the piece um, and then I also used this um, this is how I adhered them to the wooden piece is this uh, fabric tape. And then I used E6000 to glue the wooden back onto the wooden um, progress keeper. Let me take one off so I can <laughs> show it. But here, here it is. So you can see it's attached to the smaller wooden circle and then there's another wooden circle here that I glued onto the back. <laughs> And I can say that I won't be making many more of these because I did not enjoy the one over one stitching. It was really small and it just kind of, it was too small for me to enjoy. Um, but I also didn't enjoy the process of, of making these things and take, sticking them on and gluing them together. So. But I'm glad I did it. It was some, an idea I had and I wanted to do it and I did it and it's complete. They're super cute too. Yeah, they are cute. <laughs> um, and then this board that I have them on, this is temporary. This was just to show them off this um, episode. And um, they're just... Uh, not permanently attached on that. I bought that board actually to finish another cross stitch piece. So, all right. So is that the end of our finished objects? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, now we're gonna start with tap objects. So this is Holden's sock. I was at this stitch marker, which this stitch marker is actually from Grizzly Knits. So it's very cute. But this is a two by two rib DK weight sock. So it goes down for the leg and then the foot. And then it's a heel flap and gusset with the wedge toe. So, and the yarn is, I don't think I have the tag in here. No, I don't. The yarn is Ravenswood fiber, so here it is. It is I Love You to the Stars and Back. And it's done on a US 3, and he has a size 13 foot. So, it's huge. And it's in my Mountain State Stitches bag. That's my first one. You want me to do my second one? Mm hmm Okay. And then my second one is my Sunday socks by Petite Knits. That's here. And it is basically two by two. But then, I don't... There's not much to it, but it's just rib sock, basically. It's a paper pattern, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And it's in my Michaels bag, which is super cute. And, oh, I did not start the second sock for him yet. But I did start this second sock. I have two needles on it. I'm on the heel flap. So, it's a little messy. But so here it is. And this sock is three yarns held double because it is a chunky 
Aran weight pattern. So the three yarns are, hold on, sorry. <laughs> it is, this is Spectacular Yarns Advent number three. And then this one is Clark and L November's Mystery Colorway from 2020. And then I ran out of the original mohair because I was using the Rowan Kid Silk Haze. And then I ran out of it. So I just ran out actually where the heel flap starts. So you can kind of tell a difference, but not really. But I have placed an order with Hobby. And in the mail, it seemed like the package got messed up and the yarn got lost because the package was then taped, like in a ball. So, not Hobby's ball, I don't believe. But I bought mohair, and so they. this is an extra ball. But this is what it is. It's Super Kid Silk Mayflower it's in the color 120. So, this is what I'm using now to get through the foot of my sock. So, but it's fine because I was trying to use stash anyways to use socks, to do socks. So, that's what I got. It works. Yeah, you wanna use up stash? It'll be done. I don't mm -hmm. care. It's gonna be the foot, so like the feet, like if I decide to wear them in socks, no one's gonna know, but honestly, you mean who the shoes? wears, yes, uh -huh. whatever. <laughs> but who wears Aaron Waite socks and shoes? Yeah, I was gonna say, what shoes would you wear them in? You're going to wear them around the house. No, no they're he's gonna be... happy with me, so you keep going. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to keep going then. Mm, we do, yeah. Mm. That way you don't have to switch back right. and forth. We'll talk about this one. <laughs> so, Mason's bag from Molly Klein. It has a little narwhal on it. Uh, uh. Oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> oh, I did have a purchase. I'll talk about it now because I have it. Oh, Anyways, okay. so this is a yarn we dyed, and Julie named it Mr. Narwhal. Julie is her friend. Mm -hmm. So, she knits Mr. too. Mr. Hi, Julie. Narwhal. Narwhal. <laughs> And this is gonna be a hat for Mason. So he also has a little narwhal progress paper from Whimsy and Sassy. Uh, uh, uh. And this is the Muscle Bear hat by Isolde de Teague, right? Mm -hmm. So I already did the decreases, I mean increases, and I'm just knitting stock in them. And the purchase I was talking about is my needles. They're pink needles. They are the Leica blush needle set and I got the 3.5 inch tips. Oh, I thought you had them last time. Didn't you talk about Did that? I? No, because I casted this on. This was the first thing I casted on and I haven't showed this yet. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. my needles and I'm so happy about them. Look how short they are. I love it. So, mm -hmm. that was my purchase. That mm -hmm. was the only thing I really purchased. Mm -hmm. so, but that's his hat and this is also on my Make 9. And We're going to do a make nine extra. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I have this. This is in this bag. My mom bought it years ago. Mm -hmm. She gave it to me when oh, I decided I wanted to learn how to knit socks. So she put everything in here. Mm -hmm. And I am knitting the Humble Bee by Fiber Tales. But I am modifying it because... <laughs> Who modified it? <laughs> She did the math, but I decided to modify it, okay? He's falling asleep. He's so sleepy. He's but anyways, so this yarn, this is it. This is a yarn my brother got me for Christmas. It is A to Z Alpaca's sock weight yarn. I don't know where he got it either, but this is the tag. I meant to look it up, but I didn't think to before the podcast. So this is you it. You can ask him too and then mm -hmm. say it next time. Yeah, so that's this. And this is all also on my Leica needles, which I'm so happy about. But I'm not a pink person, so I don't know. She is, but she isn't. Yeah, she I don't likes, wear pink. She says she doesn't like pink, but she likes a lot of pink. And I think that's what it is. When you say you're not a pink person, that means you don't wear it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyways, so I do have the bees. They're a little hard to see. You can kind of see them. But the bees are done. And basically, we just modified it. So I can only use one skein of yarn because I have 400 something yards, I think. So it'll be like a we, shawlette. Yeah, we cut the bottom border and then made it shorter, basically. So I have fewer stitches than I called for, but the part of the shawl I wanted was the bees. So and that's all I cared about. So as long and it worked, numbers were fine. I got the bees. So now I'm just doing the rest numbers of the were decreases. Fine. <laughs> they were fine. <laughs> 
I had her modify it twice. <laughs> huh, yeah, she did. <laughs> not not because the numbers were wrong the first time. She just wanted it even Well, okay, smaller. I went, I cast it on, and I cast it on way too, like, I didn't have enough stitches for how it was modified the first time. So then... She I didn't like, want to tear that cast out no. out and recast on because it you start at the bottom of the shawl. Over 300 yeah. stitches. I so wasn't really doing it. Can you make it smaller? And I, I said, like, what did I say originally? No. And then she was like, you can't. And I was like, yes, give, me, give it to me. I'll, re <laughs> I'll rework all the numbers I just did. She just needed to rework the beads. <laughs> okay, look. I got the shawl I wanted started, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm actually really excited about that because, I mean, I knit the cozy, what is it called? Hold on. Campfire cozy. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. And it's huge. Like, it's huge. Yeah, but you, you said you a wanted blanket. a huge shawl. And I then. love it. I like it, but I haven't really worn it mm -mm. too much. So, I did take it with me somewhere. So, it's in the car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, like, it's I huge. think this one, I think when it's finished, it'll be a nice size to just kind of keep up close. And mm -hmm. then you can tuck the ends into your coat. Yeah, if I think I'll it. like this size a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, but I decided to also knit a shawl because of We Share Needles are having a shawl. Sha la 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 long. <laughs> Right? Sha la la. Something like that. La, la, I think it's two laws. <laughs> sha la la long. No. Sha, That's what they mind. do too. <laughs> sha la la. Oh, hey, I found a passy. Mm -hmm. We lose them all the time. <laughs> I find them randomly. But anyway, so it's for that make along basically. Mm -hmm. And I needed something to cast on. And I wanted to use my Leica needles more. So I did that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what to do with that yarn either yet. Because it was just one skein. So. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was like, I just want to use this because it's very similar color to the actual pattern and I was like I just want this in that shawl but I don't have enough mm -hmm. but anyways moving on in this bag from Delightful Works on Instagram on Instagram yeah mm -hmm. is my Felix which I had started oh hold it up one more time because I don't think yeah I'm not showing mine this time so she did offer free shipping um, for anyone who watches the podcast, the information for that is in the description box below, and you just have to contact her on um, Instagram, I think DM or private messenger or whatever, and let her know you're a watcher of the podcast. So, Got music notes. Oh, that's nice. On the inside. Mm -hmm. I love it. Daphne, I used Daphne was a band geek. Very nerd, much band so. nerd. What are you? Geek. Geek. Band geek. <laughs> Very much so. Mm -hmm. Okay, I did everything. Mm -hmm. But, in the bag is my Felix cardigan, which I, okay, I was like, what is that? Which I started right, like, sh around Christmas time. So, and I meant to show it last time, but I forgot to. But so, if you watched our whip parade, you would have seen it. Yeah. yeah. So, it's Felix cardigan by Savory Knitting. I think, however you say, <laughs> whichever way it is. Mm -hmm. But, so, I'm almost done with the raglan, actually. So, there's the detail. A little hard to see because it's on short needles and everything but so I think I have one more repeat and then I do the sleeves basically so this is it it's hard to show how do you show a cardigan <laughs> on the needles but that's how far I am basically so I don't know how you show cardigans this is the first one I'm showing um, but anyways, what yarn are you using it is Lions brand Woolies in the rose heather mm -hmm. this is the same yarn I used for my campfire cozy Mm -hmm. It's the leftovers, and this is done on a US 11. That's what I got gauge with, at least. Mm -hmm. So, I don't think it calls for that high of a needle. No, I don't think needle. so either. Daphne's a very tight knitter. I thought I was a tight <laughs> knitter, but she's even tighter than yeah, me. Yeah, I have problems with getting gauge now. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that your last whip? Yeah, that's it. So, and all right, I think I'm knitting. The second size. Those kids are having fun downstairs. You might be able to hear them screaming. <laughs> There's a lot of kids here. Mm -hmm. But anyways, so that's my last thing right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, since the whip parade, I did put a little bit on it, but not a lot. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. We right. gotta switch a sleeping baby. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now my work's in progress. I have a half-finished object. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. A hoe? A, <laughs> um, a regular schnegler, no problem hoe. Crafty Christina would say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the last time I showed this sock, I was here. And these were my Christmas Eve cast on, I believe. And it's a pattern that I'm writing up and going to make available on the website 
before, probably before the end of the month. Um, it's a DK weight sock and this is the original. I have since modified it some and I'll show you that in a minute. This is yarn that I dyed myself when Daphne and I had our dye day and it was originally supposed to be my Christmas colorway because um, I wanted Christmas socks. Um, but now, but my daughter, my five-year-old daughter said it looked like roses or a rose garden or a rose bush or something and now all I see is roses and so since I didn't, um, well, of course I wasn't going to finish them on time for Christmas. I didn't cast them on until Christmas Eve. But so now these will be my Valentine's Day socks and probably Christmas socks too. Mm -hmm. Who am I kidding? They look like both because I mean like if the white was crisper, it would have been more Christmassy. Uh -huh. But since it's kind of pinky, yeah, it's not too much Christmas. But yeah. it also looks Christmassy. It like does. you could wear it either spring it, springtime or Christmas time. I think Christmas we called it Christmas ribbons or yeah. something like that. Um, but because yeah, they were supposed to be a Christmas socks, so we mm -hmm. chose the Christmas name. Mm -hmm. So there's, um, I'm not going to talk too much about this specific sock because I did, like I said, modified the pattern. Um, but I will say that I knitted the round toe, which is on, on the Rose Opal Knits website, um, in the toe, DK weight toe series. And, um, I... You can cinch the end or you can kitchener the end and I kitchenered here. Um, so let me show you the other one I'm working on. Here it is. That's... Every time I see this yarn, I'm like, oh, it's so pretty. It is pretty. I think that while I, I knit it. Um, so here it is. And when I showed it last on the um, podcast, I was right there. And this is Luna Lovegood. This was in my advent calendar this year for my friend Julie. And so there's the pattern on the front, just a very simple, fun to knit pattern. The ribbing is what I changed from the um, first one. And this detail around here is a little bit different, but there's got quite a bit going on in this ribbing, um, but it's easy. Um, so I knit the leg and then this heel, this heel mirrors the front design in the center but then it's just the slip stitch heel like a normal slip stitch heel on the sides so I love that heel I think it's a lot of fun and um, I am working through the currently working through the gusset decreases and this sock should be finished very soon this yarn is by Artistic Lily and it is the Pink Maiden colorway on the awesome DK sock base, which is a 75-25 Super Wash Merino Nylon. And I am knitting both socks on a US 3 and 48 stitches is what I'm doing. So I have decided to call this sock pattern Grateful Morning Socks. And um, like I said, the pattern should be up on the Rose Oval Nets website for free before the end of January and they are living in this bag from Noble Character Crafts bag from Noble Character Crafts and my next work in progress is the bandwidth tunic that I cast on it's my new year cast on and I stripe in it yeah Ooh. I am knitting. I haven't seen it since she had the orange. Yeah, so this is my New Year's cast on. I am using stash yarn um, that was in Daphne's stash first. She didn't know what to do with it, so she passed it on to me, and it sat in my stash for a while. I didn't know what to do with it either, but then I was inspired to knit through my stash this year in December. I had I did had some deep thinking, <laughs> and I, I all the time in the world to do deep thinking. <laughs> and I um, and I decided that 2022 would be the year that I tried to knit through a lot of my stash, and then Carla of Carla Knits Podcast. Hi Carla, if you're watching, um, she's having a love your stash Mal. I think that's what it's called. But anyway, you knit you knit your stash anything that was in your stash before 2022. If you knit with it or crochet with it or whatever, you know, you can 
joined the Mal. And um, so once I saw that on her podcast, I was like, I'm definitely doing it. And um, I don't have a huge stash, but it's bigger than what I want it to be currently. It's smaller than mine. Yeah. So the last time I showed this, I'm knitting this for my five-year-old daughter. And I'm making the size, this six to eight size, I think. Or seven to eight size. I didn't write it down. I mean, I did write it down, but I don't think I have that note. Wait, yes, I do. <laughs> six to eight year size. And um, it's a paid for pattern, so I won't say too much. But I am knitting it on a size, US size 5 needle, and I've already modified it. It's a one color project. Daphne um, gave me these three balls and these three colors, which is lilac, tangerine, and chambray. It's Hobby Lobby yarn. Mm -hmm. It is Yarn B Fresco Fiber yarn. There's a tag. And the bottom of the pattern has a Pico bottom. And when I started, I just I just didn't feel like doing that. So and I love a good garter stitch um, border. So I did garter stitch. And the last time I showed it, I had only done the cast on, a knit round, and started the purl round. So I was down here. I didn't feel like I needed to put a marker on for that. Mm -hmm. And though since then I did the border. I did one one knit round, one extra knit round in the tangerine. Hold on one second. Okay, we were interrupted, but we get interrupted a lot, <laughs> so that's normal. Um, all right, so I was talking about the changes I made to this pattern. Garter stitch, um, then I did one knit row of the orange, and then now I'm striping the other two colors together. So what I've decided, is that this this is the skirt part of the tunic um i'm going to stripe the chambray and the lilac color all the way to the waistband or to where you decrease and then i think i'm going to do another couple rounds of garter stitch i think that they might even be on the pattern i'm not sure um and then the the top of the tunic is going to be the tangerine color with a wide stripe or a wide-ish stripe of the chambray and a wide-ish stripe of the lilac to tie the skirt into the top. That's my plan. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, full disclosure. When I joined in the round, I twisted my stitches. And I didn't real realize it until I had knit six rounds of the garter stitch and then I realized I was switching to the stockinette to go into the stockinette portion and I said I'm not ripping that out she's she's five she's not gonna know <laughs> so even if she does I twist tell her yep it's part of it so I twisted the, the yarn like I laid it on the needles out on the couch I think I took pictures and um and I just flipped it and I started knitting and you can barely tell. I think when I um, go to um, sew in those ends, I'll be able to kind of pull those, sew those together. And at the, you know, at the, at its best, no one will notice. And at the worst, it'll be a little design feature. <laughs> um, Cause that there's 330 stitches, I think on the needles right now. And I was not ripping that all out. I, I did not have the mental energy for it. So this project is in my, I think it's a purse or some kind of small tote from Vera Bradley that a friend gave to me a couple years ago. And my last whip is in this tote bag that my friend Julie gave me with the quote from Persuasion. Persuasion is my favorite Jane Austen novel. I think I say that every time. But in this bag is my Rituals sweater by Hohi Locatelli. Um, I have modified this pattern. So, the Ritual sweater by Hohi Locatelli, sorry about the black and white, but that's what I got, um, is a two color sweater, stripes and lace, stripes and lace. I omitted the lace and I am striping more than one color. 
So the green is the, I, would, I don't know, I would say the grounding color. I don't know if that's right, but um, it's what I started with and then what I striped the new color with and then the wide stripe of the new color, then back to the green. Um, and the last time I showed it on the podcast, I was right there. So I started the ribbing and finished it. And I tried it on and it's a perfect length. I was, my original plan was that the, um, the bottom ribbing was going to be in the green. So this wide um, goldish stripe would have been all stocking at and then the ribbing would have been in the green. But I didn't know how to transition that with stripes. And I didn't just want to add it. So I kind of had a feeling that this sweater was going to be the perfect length anyway. So I thought about it for a little while and I decided to just switch to ribbing in this color stripe and finish the sweater. And it's actually, I wouldn't have wanted it any longer. I mean, it's pretty long without being like tunic length. So I just need to do the sleeves and hopefully that'll be finished very soon. I plan on picking up the sleeve stitches this evening and starting the sleeves. And the sleeves will be striped like the sweater. So I am using, I think I would remember what it's called. <laughs> Prairie Spun DK. All of the yarns are Prairie Spun DK. Um, it's a three ply yarn and I picked it up at my local yarn store. And what else can I tell you about this? Oh, I'm knitting it on wooden, it's a non superwash yarn and I like knitting non superwash yarn on wooden needles. So these are Knitter's Pride needles on a Knit Picks cable and they are a US 9. And I think that's it. So that's all our works in progress. Yep. Um, I do have a couple of purchases. I just have the needle that I already talked about. One's brand new and the others I've had for a little while, I think. So just very quickly, back in December, I saw on Instagram, I don't know how I saw it on Instagram because I don't know that I followed this dyer, but I think someone suggested maybe, I don't know, someone I followed suggested this dyer and I went and checked the dyer out. The dyer is Chicken Lady Fibers Arts, Chicken Lady Fiber Arts. I just love that color. Isn't that pretty? Um, so this is a little story behind this. So it was, I think it was early, it was late November, early December, and I went to her site and or I went to her Instagram and I saw on her Instagram that she has a map of the places she sent her yarn. And one of the states that she had not sent yarn to yet was Delaware. And of course, we're in Delaware. And I thought, oh, maybe I could give her a little, you know, check mark off for Delaware. So I went to her shop and I saw this color and I instantly loved it. So I purchased it. But then it arrived while, I think it arrived while I was in the hospital. So it got kind of got put in the back of the closet with some Christmas presents that were going to be looked at later. And then when I finally uncovered it, I forgot to show it in the last podcast. But here it is, it's DK weight sock, 75-25 nylon, 245 yards. And I am going to make DK weight socks out of it. So pretty. But what I thought was neat about this, is that she sent along, well, there was a pen, in the, an ink pen in the package in a cool green color. And then here is her, a card that she wrote a little note on. But she sent this, the chicken, um, it says Chicken Lady Fiber Arts Love in Every Stitch, her sticker. But when you open the box, it is, um, all of her yarn bases. Ooh. So it looks like like that. It tells you what they are and it tells you the color. And then when you open it, 
That's that. Oh, I'm holding it too low. And there. Oh, look, there's a Reese gum. <laughs> but so it shows you the same colorway on all her bases. And then that colorway is hazy purple, actually. It tells you on this card, too, up top. So. Um, but then you can, you know, look in, and feel and just get an idea. And I thought that was a lot of fun. So I definitely wanted to show that on the podcast. And let me put this down without hitting. So a couple other, a few other things that I have um, is I decided to join row one. So this was my first row one. And I'm sure you've seen this already because I've seen lots of people show it. But this is $3.98. And I'm not going to take them all out. But look at all those fun minis. So that's exciting. And this is a cross stitch book I picked up. That's pretty. Yeah. There are, I think, four. Four, and three of them are on the back that I like. Oh. Um, so these three, no, these three, I'm seriously considering stitching at some point. But then my favorite, and the whole reason I bought the book, was for this one. I saw it on a floss tube. I just love it. Can you see it? On there? Mm -hmm. okay. That's great. Uh huh. And it's called Between Two Pines is a Doorway to a New World. J. Mirror, I think it says. But then I got it and I realized that all this dark green is the fabric. So you stitch the lighter colors to make the dark trees. Oh, and that's cool. The words, maybe. I'm not sure. But I hate stitching on dark fabric. <laughs> So I don't know, but I do. Like I said, I love these three as well. Um, and this one makes me laugh. It says, pardon the weeds, we are feeding the bees. Because I always tell my husband, like, just leave the dandelions in the grass for the bees, please. And he says, well, you might love the dandelions, but the HOA does it. So, <laughs> but, so I have one more thing I left downstairs. I'm going to go grab it. Okay, I have one last thing to um, talk about. So I watch, one of the first podcasts I ever started watching was Christy of the Relatively Crafty podcast. And um, she knits a lot of socks and a lot of sweaters and she reads. And so she um, talks about the books that she reads and I enjoy um, listening to her talk, discuss her books. But I also enjoy, you know, seeing her knits. Um, she had a giveaway in November or December, I can't remember, um, for these beaded progress keepers. It was, it's like a holiday set. Am I holding that upside down? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the 2021 Christmas collection. Um, and oh, the shop name is, um, my country, no, Hey Country Creations. Or my country, hey, I think it's Hey. Yeah, Hey Country Creations. Hey Country Creations. It's on Etsy, mm -hmm. and she has an Instagram. Um, but these are so cute. There's a Christmas tree and a gingerbread house, and I, I guess it's a skull Santa. That's an, what it looks like. An <laughs> ornament, and then ho 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 Santa. Ho ho ho. Santa. <laughs> A candy cane and then this lamp, which is from, from a Christmas Story. That movie, yeah. Uh huh. So anyway, I um, left a comment and I won these, and um, she contacted me, and um, no, I saw that I had won on Relatively Crafty Christie's podcast, and then I con I was supposed to contact her on Instagram. So I contacted her, she messaged me back, and. Then I went to her, I visited her shop on Etsy and I saw this cute little coffee mug or tea, tea mug, whatever you put in it. A mug. A mug. <laughs> and I went ahead, I ordered that and messaged her back and said, I just ordered, you know, this coffee mug or whatever. You can include it, you know, or from your shop. And 
send it along with my winnings. <laughs> but then she, her family got COVID. So she had, she messaged me back again and apologized and said they wouldn't get sent out right away. And I said, no problem, totally understand. And, uh, but then when she sent the back and she included this little extra fall leaf and I don't know they're just super cute and she's just a little shop on Etsy and um, I think she's a new shop mm -hmm. so I just wanted to um, mention her on there give her a follow on Instagram at hey country creations and uh, check out her shop on Etsy so they're very cute all right so we um, have talked long enough. Theo had a little nap. Now he's awake. <laughs> um, we are going to do our make an, another extra video, our, and we're going to talk about our make nines. And um, then I, I'm also going to do an extra video in early February. <laughs> <laughs> um, like just going over my cross stitch plans for the year. Um, because several of you said that you were interested in that. So I will do it. And um, <laughs> And I mean, I'm excited to do it. I love to talk about cross stitch as well. Um, <laughs> but all right, so we'll be back with a regular podcast, episode 53, in two weeks. But look for our Make Nine extra video. <laughs> all right, so um, if you made it this far, we appreciate it. <laughs> we always appreciate everyone who watches and leaves such nice comments. And, um, and if you're new and you've made it this far, we hope that you've enjoyed the video and you will <laughs> consider subscribing. And, um, and if you want, join the Facebook group and, um, you know, I don't know. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. So we hope that you have a great two weeks and we will see you then. Bye. Bye.